Are you ready to take the lead in the dance of life? Fall in love with who you are right now and find uninhibited joy every day? Then it's time for you to flaunt your smart, sexy, and spiritual self. Join radio host Laura Cheadle and learn how the five steps of flaunt can help you quit seeking approval, proving your worth, and release you from the judgment of others. Express all that you are, discover your naked self-worth, and finally, enjoy the life you've worked so hard to create. Hello, you're listening to Flaunt, the podcast for women who are ready to quit proving their worth and to start stepping in and owning their power so they can live their own life, their own way with all the joy, all the satisfaction and all the enthusiasm for life that they deserve. It's spring. And spring for a lot of people means spring cleaning. It means getting a spring body on. It means getting in shape and feeling good. Now, if you've been listening to my show for a while, you know that I am all about feeling good. And yes, I love fitness. But the reason that I love fitness is for how good it makes you feel. And that's why I'm really, really excited to bring on today's guest. Today's guest is Liz Hall, and she is really passionate about empowering people to take control of their health. She's the owner and the founder of The V Trainer, a customized fitness and nutrition company. And what I really love about Liz is the fact that she herself lost 100 pounds naturally. She dedicates her life to guiding others on their health journey, And she has also created a mind, body, soul, micro step approach to losing weight to drastically enhance transformational and sustainable results for her clients. She works with both individuals and companies to really help provide solutions for everyone. And like I said, that is what I appreciate so much about her. It's not just this, oh, take this magic pill. It's about what you do day in, day out in these micro steps to make yourself feel the way you deserve to feel. So I hope you are as ready as I am to bring her on. (laughs) Welcome to the show, Liz. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Oh, I can't wait to hear. I have person, I've been a personal trainer and I've taught fitness since 1988. And I love the way you break things down because it's not that hard, but it does take consistency and dedication. And kudos to you for losing a hundred pounds. That is no small task. And I'd like to start there. Can you tell listeners a little bit about your journey, both how you got the 100 extra pounds on your body, as well as how you got 100 extra pounds off of your body. Yeah, absolutely. So what I love about you and what I love about your show and what you stand for are habits. It's so critical. And so I was in a bad habit, (laughs) um, a negative mind space, I was depressed. I was hopeless. I, at some point, I'm sure I gave up on myself. Um, and then something snaps. And what I found is in transformation, you hit bottom. And, and that's, that's that point. That's the, the pivot that you, you can either surrender completely and start to seek out advice and tools to start getting on a new direction or you just keep going down a rabbit hole. I, I was done with the rabbit hole. I was ready to make the, the transition. So there was some psychology behind what got me to the that weight, uh, as there often is. Um, in fact, I have a trauma therapist on my staff because a lot of highly obese people are that way because of trauma and not processing the trauma and so i acknowledge that and how i did it what just like you said it's 
simple and it's not easy, right? And so I, I am blessed with willpower. And so the accountability factor for me actually wasn't the main thing that I needed. However, most of my clients, that's exactly what they need. They need somebody in their corner because when we get down about ourselves, it's like, if we're not cheering ourselves on, there's no chair suction around us to keep us going, right? And so my company stands to be that chair section for you. So that no matter what you show up to in the day with your human emotions, we got you. And we're here to remind you of what you're capable of and empower you back to what you're up to and what you're up to creating. Uh, it's so important mindset is so important and i could do 18 segment podcast shows <laughs> on mindset alone that's what i love i'm obsessed with it um the reality is, is i i changed my mindset i changed the conversation about myself to myself and that's what started to get me on the right track i started first with nutrition i'm a physical person so activity and working out was easier for me to, to stay disciplined in. The first thing I needed to tackle was food and my relationship with food. And I, I share this, I think it's so funny when I look back on it, I would eat at three o'clock in the afternoon to prove to myself I wouldn't die if I didn't have lunch and breakfast by that point. And so it was this, again, mental, it's these tricks that we play with our mind and becoming aware and conscious of the thoughts that we have of, about ourselves and in our daily activities. Again, I, I can't, I thank you for your service because people forget how much control they actually do have over their mindset and actions with habits. It's everything. We have so little control about everything else and every single second we have control over our thoughts. And so again, just kudos to you for what you stand for and, and what you share with the world. Oh, good. Thank you. You said some really important things around that too. You said you have really strong willpower. Some people don't. You said fitness is easy for you, but you had to get control of the nutrition. What I like about what you said is just what you said. We're all different. Some yeah. people need the cheerleader. Some people need nutrition. Some people need the mindset. Some people need the food. It's such a puzzle and it is simple, but it is a puzzle. And until you figure out those pieces and what pieces you struggle with, it's a free for all. <laughs> we can keep going down this, this path of, and, it, and it's overstimulation of information. There are thousands of diets, thousands of workout regimens. And really until we get clear on the psychology behind it. So you said it exactly right. Cause that is one question that our coaches ask, how do you respond in coaching? Do you like tough love? Do you like, right? So you get a drill yeah. sergeant type of technique with, uh, with your personal trainer on, from my company. Do you need more of a gentle, uh, in, encouraging cheerleader? Or are you more of an analyzer and you want to know more of why you're doing something right? And so getting to those mic, it, it is a micro step approach and diving into it, how perfectly said puzzle. I want to figure out your puzzle and how we can get you your results in a safe and effective way that's going to keep you mentally healthy. You know, we can all go on fad diets. We can all do, you know, chemical based, and it's just not how the body is made to function and it's not sustainable. I want to guide my clients to sustainable results. That's everything. What's the point of doing all that work? And then you just gain it back because your mindset wasn't right. Exactly. Okay. Going to mindset. I'm going to zero in on a tough one because I know this is a tough one for people. You lost a hundred pounds. That's a lot of weight. And that takes consistent work over a consistent period of time. And it's easy to get discouraged. You know, even when I have like five pounds to lose, I'll break it down and I'll think safely, realistically, how I lose weight best is about one to two pounds a week. And sometimes even at that, I'll think, ugh, that's three weeks. That's a long time. I want it now. I want to lose the five pounds next week. And, <laughs> and although I could work out enough and cut calories enough that I could lose five pounds in a week, I know it's not sustainable that way. I know it's just backing down on my habits, ramping up on some different things. 
but it can be defeating sometimes. How did you stay out of defeat and stay positive also when the weight still cycles, even when you're doing all the right things, weight still cycles. I, I'm laughing because I just, I can so relate to how you feel. And I will say this, it feels like the last five pounds, by the way, is the <laughs> hardest, right? And so when people come to me, actually, when people come to me for 10 pounds, my heart just goes right to them because here, here's what happens. One conversation that we have with ourselves is it's only five pounds like it's fine right right and so we'll talk ourselves out of it like well it's taco tuesday so you know i'll, I'll get to it later so how did i overcome defeat the reality is is when we have a goal of any kind if it's physical if it's financial it is not a linear journey when we say defeat, it's it's what comes up around that. So for instance, if if I'm on my weight loss journey of 100 pounds and one week I gain, mm -hmm. what I'm in charge of is the conversation that comes up around that number about myself, identifying with it, and then choosing to focus on it or focus on my goal, right? So it's, it, it is this constant recommitment. Losing weight and health and any goal, financial, I, I, I say a lot about finances because there is a very strong common denominator between finances and health and it's of self-value and self-worth. Mm. You'll hear me say that quite a bit. So any journey that we go on understanding that there are going to be times where we get a, a little bit ahead and then fall back a little bit in those moments grace is required and recommitment and i and i compare it to marriage every day is not a walk in the park with your spouse and you recommit anyways every single day so even if you don't like them even if i don't like what that number is saying on the scale i recommit and I get right back to what I'm doing without losing my head about it and letting my emotions drive. And it, and the basis of this is in the conversations that we have that come up when we see those numbers, when we see what we don't want to see when, right. When, so when we're experiencing this quote unquote backtrack, it's all part of the journey. It, it, it is pure grace that we must give ourselves. It's gentle. It's patience. It's, it's understanding. It's, not giving up on ourselves, knowing that this is a natural progression. Mm -hmm. The word recommit is great because that is exactly what it is. And that's any goal, yeah. any, any commitment requires constant recommitment. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> any commitment requires constant recommitment. Yeah. And then cutting out everything else that inhibits getting to that. Yeah. I, I, I like that reframe around that because it's so easy for us to have our emotions take over. And part of the reason that I quit training people was I got really tired of hearing the excuses. <laughs> it's my thyroid. It's my knees. It's my, you know, and pretty soon it's like, oh my gosh, we all have something whether it's the thyroid or the knees or the ankle or the baby or the pain or whatever, we all have that thing. You still have to transcend it and you still have to make a decision and you still have to figure out something to do around it. The flaunt is an acronym and the N in flaunt is navigate the negative. And that's one of those things. So navigate it. So you don't like this. So this to navigate and find something else. I, I say act as if, act as if you don't have a thyroid problem. Yes. How are you eating? <laughs> How <laughs> are you training? Because there's a level of honesty, brutal honesty that we must face with ourselves when getting to a goal. It's this, again, finances, where am I spending money? It, you cannot manage what you're not measuring. Mm 
And so if we're sitting here making excuse, and I, I hear you because there are some days, and I fired clients. Yes. You know what? At the end of the day, because I take people's goals on as if they're my own. At the end of the day, if you're not committed, I'm not a fit for you. I will get you results. You must do the work. You do not have to do it alone. Right. And so I, I hear you because a lot of passionate trainers get burnt out and it is understanding the psychology behind what gets people overweight. And I was blessed with my journey, you know, for years, I didn't even talk about my, my weight, my highest weight, how much I lost because I was ashamed and, and bigger than that is I don't identify with that woman anymore. That's not who I am. And so when I started to dissect my story, it was so hard for me and very emotional because I simply am not that woman. And I'm and your people are asking me to dip back into that space that I have tried years and years to heal. And yeah. so it was a challenge for me. Act as if and get brutally honest. And all we are here to do with the V trainer is say, okay. That aside, I hear you. I hear you. I see you because that's what people need. What else? <laughs> right. And like dig a little bit deeper and, and get real with it. And that is when trans again, there are pieces of transformation. There are, there are, it's a puzzle transformation right. is a puzzle and there are pieces to it. I, lo I love that you say that, that totally yes. landed with, you. um, honesty is, is so critical of, of a piece with that. It, it really is. Yes. Okay. So we're acting as if we're changing, we're getting real, we're getting brutally honest, but it's still a long journey. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It, and it still takes work and it still takes effort. And along the way, I love that you've got a trauma therapist because yes, you're right. Along the way, things come up like maybe some repressed trauma maybe, you know, some other, and you have to start dealing with it. Yes. What is your recommendation for people who think, yeah, I hear you. And I do have some trauma, but I don't want to go there. I don't want to open that box right now. I've got kids at home. I've got a full-time job. I've got, that's just going to have to wait because I can't, I can't unbox that trauma right now. What yeah. is your best advice to them? You know, that's fair. We, must th this as human beings we must meet people where they're at we mm -hmm. must meet people where, where they're at and with compassion love and kindness and so if somebody says you know what i have this and i'm not ready fair yeah. fair sending you love and light and so i would invite them to make one they have a decision at that point mm -hmm. we want to tackle this from a belief system about ourselves on a physical body level and, and not go there mm -hmm. if it's something else. Do we want to just talk about conversations about our looks, right? right. So not, so not maybe anything that's happened to the physical body, but the things that we think about our physical body. Okay. Do we want to do that? Or, or are you not ready to, to take on anything? Right. Because that may be people are going to be women specifically are, externally motivated whereas men are typically internally motivated so with women to it's th there's a little bit more opportunity to say you know what it, it, how do you want to feel in a bathing suit what are some things that we can get that you'll feel good about and then we're, we're leaving that trauma I like that and you're ready and just being a space if somebody typically people come to me when they're when they're either in the healing journey or about to embark on it. And I'm just a guide, right? So that's, yeah, that's who usually shows up in my space. Uh, it's, everybody has free will. I think it's so important for us to just hold space for anybody that's not ready yet. Hold space of love, light, and, and be, because people feel that we're energetic, right? Right. right? So if I'm like, you know what, I feel this, it's heavy. It, you know, it's not mine. It's, and it's heavy. Um, that's critical. A lot of 
a lot of people I have seen not take that kindness route. I think kindness always wins. I think kindness must be the basis of anything, especially when we're, we're trying to serve people in a, in a health journey. Yeah. There are folks of health and, and physical body is just one of them, right? But if, if we're me to somebody and say, well, you just don't want it bad enough, that's not fair. That's not fair and it's not accurate. <laughs> right, right. And, and listeners, I, I want to just land on that for a little bit. Wherever you're at with your own journey right now, if you're thinking, I'm ready for change, perfect. If you're thinking, I'm so not ready for change, but I'm thinking about change, I'm in the pre contemplation stage, perfect. You know, wherever you're at is the exact right place to be. And when it feels right, it's right. And I know, Liz, you said earlier, the, you sometimes have to hit that rock bottom to come back out. And that's okay too. It's okay to hit rock, rock bottom. And it's also okay not to hit rock bottom. So wherever you're at, that awareness piece is key and that kindness piece. And we're talking about mindset. It's, it's the kindness to yourself. It's that not looking in the mirror every morning and saying, what a fat cow I am, you know, or good Lord, look at these thighs. It's looking at the mirror and loving yourself as you are. We talked just a couple of minutes ago about the, about the N in flaunt as being navigating the negative, but the AU, the golden center of flaunt is accept unconditionally. You are how you are. <laughs> and it doesn't really matter how you got there. And it doesn't matter if you unwind it or if you stay there. What matters is you accept where you're at. And if you want help, people like Liz and her company are there. Like she said, it's an overflow of information. So if you want some information, use it. If you want a cheerleader, use it. If you need some tough love, use it. But accept unconditionally where you're at and what you want. Now, what you said was, was so beautiful in accepting where we're at. And so when we when we say things, the negative things we say about ourselves can re be repeated up to a thousand times a day. And there's a quote that it's along the lines of, we can never be where we're not meant to be. So right now is where exactly where we're at. There's five levels of motivation. Be aware of it. When we look in the mirror, we have an option to focus on what we like or what we don't like, what we want versus what we don't want. And that's in life. And so what I invite my clients to do is when they have this, oh, my arms are so fat and it, let that come up for as long as it needs to talk. Okay. That, Cause that's, that's there. So allow that and accept that right? So acceptance comes in the negative and the positive. So accept yeah. that that's there, let that come up because we're going to try to quiet it as we go, as we practice it. So allow it to come up. Okay. I see that. And look at all of the things my arms have carried throughout the years, children, me being able to lift a sick child off the floor, me carrying my dog who couldn't walk down the stairs in her, in her last days. It, that surely gives me more appreciation for them instead of focusing on a vanity thing, right? So if we can shift to gratitude on that, which I live by is gratitude, it feels better. So what I invite your listeners to do is, is when you feel that come up, when you feel that, whatever pain point you have about your body, because everybody has it, like, oh, I don't like my thighs. Just becoming aware because that's everything. That's the first step in anything. So let that come up. And then I invite the listeners to say, pick something that they, they've done for you. Yeah. Find something, find a couple things that they've shown up for you and switch it to gratitude and see how that feels. And if that feels better, work it, run with that. And, and every time you find those conversations come up, keep focusing on the gratitude. That conversation is going to become a whisper. What is yelling so loud is your thighs are fat is going to become a whisper. Mm -hmm. If we become aware and we're committed <laughs> to, to shifting and feeling good, we deserve to feel good. People, everybody on this walking earth deserves to feel good yeah. and acceptance. I said with such conviction, it just flowed through me last week in such a powerful way. It, it was not me. <laughs> if, if that, it was divine guidance to say, 
our journey here is about nobody else. It is to have forgiveness and acceptance of self, to learn unconditional love for ourselves as God, the universe, whatever you believe in does, how, how God and the universe sees us. That is the journey. How we get there is so vast and so different for every walk. You know, every soul has a different journey. Mm -hmm. I want to be a space of pure love, non-judgment to say, no matter where you're at, we can get you to somewhere you feel good. And, and what happens is when you work out and you start to get this, you start to get physical accomplishments, you, it's a byproduct to have higher self-esteem and believe in yourself and confidence. It's a byproduct. So people don't even know that that's where I go, right? It's like, there's some method to the madness. But when I get calls and they're like, oh my gosh, I did my first push up. It's like, <laughs> you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, I yes. know. <laughs> I know, that's what I was working you up to. So yeah, it, it, your message is so powerful because it is, it is forgiveness of self and others and acceptance of self and others mm -hmm. to create that unconditional love for ourselves and then others. Yeah. I, I want to go there next around the body and what you said around that, because we are multifaceted beings and we do have a body and although it's not right to negatively judge our bodies, we do have our bodies and it is important to, like you said, feel good in them. What is one thing that listeners can do today after they listen to the show that will put them maybe in better tune with their body or one exercise that will enable them to start understanding, oh, when I do something physical, it does make me feel better. This is going to probably catch people off guard. Breathing, in, in conscious breathing. What happens when we are still is we'll start to hear our body talk to us. That's the greatest gift. What I'm going to say about this is then it's up to you of what you do with it. So if, if you're sitting in stillness and you're breathing and, and you have an ache, just a really strong pain somewhere, <laughs> what do you do with it? I'm, I'm giggling because I, I'm giggling because I've done this. When our car starts to make noises, we take it to a mechanic. <laughs> when our body starts making noises, we're like, it's fine. It's, it's all right. And we ignore it. And we, right? we don't, we have no, we don't even think about going to a quote unquote mechanic for the body. That, that's one thing I, I will say to just get connected. If we have gotten outside of our comfort weight, if, if we're obese and so we're like on a spectrum way disconnected from our body, breathing will bring us back to start the connection to that. One of the most powerful exercises that you can do is a push up. I, I love them. I love them so much. Now, if somebody tells me they have shoulders, they can't do a full push up, that's fine. You can do it off the couch. You can do it off the kitchen counter. Just get started. You can do what I call chicken wings, but you're not military style, is my point. You're going to go where you can go. Yeah. Walking. I met a woman in New Jersey when I was living there that lost 80 pounds just by walking. Mm -hmm. So many powerful things happen when you're walking. If you're outside, I know it's winter. So there, there's some strategy too. Like you might need to go walk in a mall or something like that, especially with COVID. Anyhow, uh, that's my, my thing to solve for you. But when we're walking, let's just pretend it's a perfect summer day. You're going to start to be in touch with the environment. So it, it's a, it's an experience. It becomes an experience. So you're connecting with your body and you're also connecting with spirit and mm -hmm. nature and, and the world and other people. So, um, walking is phenomenal and, and it's so easy. Yeah. If you're in pain, let's say you have knee stuff and you can't walk distance. You could do wall sits where you're pretending to sit on against the wall without a chair and strengthen your quads and start to work on pulling some, some pressure off the knees. Um, so many, I mean, so many things you can do that are, that you don't require, you know, it doesn't require any equipment. Right. Right. And I, I swear by pushups because I had such a great transformation of just doing 50 pushups every day. It uh -huh. was so solid. <laughs> Here, here's what I like about pushups because I, I like about them too. I like, I like that everybody 
by and large, when you say push-ups, people go, oh, <laughs> because we have kind of this preconceived notion about what's hard. And I'm putting hard in quotes. And doing something that's hard feels good because it does prove to you that you can do it. We can do hard things. We can say hard things. You know, we can do hard things. And then we get the satisfaction that we have done a hard thing. And I think that's really invaluable because it does build our confidence muscles and it lets us know, oh, wow, if I can do a push up or five or 50, whether they're on my knees or on my toes or just on the wall, it's still something that I have done. And that goes back to that mindset piece too. We have control over not a lot, <laughs> not over the virus, not over other people, not over you know the weather. We have control over what we think and what we do. And if we choose to do a push up and then two push ups and then maybe three push ups, that's a choice and we can see the progress and we can do hard things. And that's, that's important. By way of that, what happens is expansion of the brain without us even knowing that we begin to expand on what else is possible. That's what shows up when we do something that we didn't think we could do, just like you said, hard things, but we did it. Then the brain and, and the ego shakes a little bit. They're like, no, don't get, don't be getting crazy now. Right. The ego's like, don't be getting wild, Laura. Okay. Yeah. You, you did a hard thing, but that's it. No more. You don't know what's on the other side of anything else. And really the higher self chimes in. Right. And, and you do start to expand like, I, I bet I can do this. Right? And you start to get curious. What else can I do? Uh, it's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. On my website, it says confidence is not born, it's built. And that yeah. is exactly what you said. You keep showing up for yourself. That's how confidence is built. It's by showing up when you don't want to consistently. It's not even in the result. It really is not. No. It is showing up to what you said you were going to do consistently. Yes. Yes. We're going to take a quick break for a commercial. And when we come back, I'm going to say, I'm going to tag onto that quote, doing things consistently. And I'm going to add a little tweak to that. And then I also want to talk a little bit about nutrition. So we will be back. To all the women who have cried in the shower, smiled when they wanted to scream and couldn't wait to get home and unhook their bra. Flaunt is the definitive guidebook on how to get back in touch with who you are underneath your labels, roles, and scripts. Fall in love with yourself right now. Breathe life into the dreams you left behind and live each day with uninhibited joy. Pick up a copy of Laura Cheadle's number one best-selling book, Flaunt. Drop your cover and reveal your smart, sexy, and spiritual self wherever books are sold. It's available in print, digital, and audio formats and comes with two downloadable meditations. And we are back and we left with a quote about confidence and about doing things consistently is what gives us confidence. And Liz was talking about showing up and just doing it and doing hard things. And she was also talking earlier about breathing and listening to your body and to know how it feels. And here for me is the true power of that. It is such a balance. And sometimes people have an idea and it's the wrong idea that if they dedicate their lives to fitness or to working out, then they have to do it and they have to show up. And it's gonna take all of this stuff out of their day and out of their life. And it's gonna be such a, such a dedicated effort. And they're like, oh, I just don't have time for that. On the flip side of that, because yes, there's some, there's some truth to that. When you're in shape and when you know how your body feels, you know what your body needs. And you're confident enough to back off of things that you know you shouldn't do. And my little story around that is I was in a car accident last week that was a pretty bad car accident. And I was very lucky and I'm very grateful and I'm very blessed. And I have a very mild concussion. 
And because of that, I can't work out. And because I work out, I know how my body feels and I know where it hurts and I know what I can do and I know what I need and I know when I need to sleep and I know when I need to get off the computer and I know when I need to stretch because I'm really in tune with how my body feels. So it's kind of a convoluted flip side of things that being in touch with your body does not necessarily mean, oh my gosh, now it's warrior mode every day for the rest of my life. It's a gift. Whether you are sick or injured or tired, having that gift of knowing how you feel is truly invaluable. And that is what true physical fitness is about. I completely agree with you and sending you all the love and light uh, on the recovery. That's it's scary. And thank God you're, you're good. Um, I can already hear listeners saying, well, she works out. So she's in touch with her body. I don't work out. So I don't know. You're not listening to your body, your body, everybody's body speaks to them. Are you listening? Am I listening to what my body is saying? And so everybody has this, it's not like, and you're amazing. And you're no different than anybody else's ability to be in touch. Yes. I am not either. I'm not this magician who just can hear her about, that's not how it works. I am conscious of it. I am mindful of it. Mm -hmm. I choose to be listening to it. So I I just want to make that point because I can hear that coming up. Yes. Thank you for saying that. And to tag on to that, for me, my working out space becomes a listening space. It becomes a place where I listen even harder to my body. And that's just a dedicated practice. And it does take practice. And I don't care how old you are, how horribly out of shape you are or what conditions you have, you know, like you said, as if it doesn't matter if you have both legs amputated (laughs) and you're fighting cancer, you can do certain things and working out is only, you don't have to work out to a certain level. It just makes it better for everything. It gives you more of ability to hear. People will say losing weight is 80% nutrition, 20% working out. I say it's 99.9% nutrition and 0.1% working out because you can't outrun a fork. And I hear the excuses and the reality is, is I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease during my weight loss that I was put on a pill that made me gain weight. Mm -hmm. And at that point I could have been like, nope, gonna be fat forever, right? And I still lost weight on the medication because I acted as if it was nothing. Yeah. What we focus on is what is created. If I focus on the fact that it was possible for that medication to make me gain weight, it would have. Yes. I did not focus on that. (laughs) I focused on my goal, which was to lose weight and I recommitted. Right. And so, yeah, it, 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 mindfulness, I, I, that it's, I'm obsessed with it because we're so powerful and people, we forget how powerful we are. Yes, absolutely. And that was also the perfect segue to, to the nutritional piece, because I agree for me, working out is my place to meditate. It's my place to hear my body. It's my place to have fun and to be in joy, but you're absolutely right. You cannot run outrun a fork. So let's talk about nutrition a little bit. Um, Again, the deluge of information. Everybody knows so much about information or about nutrition, but everybody doesn't apply it. And everybody knows so much, but why are we all still overweight? If we know so much, what's, what's, what's the hang up and what can you do to help listeners get a little bit of a handle today on their nutrition? My question to you is, When you get information, what actions do you take? That's the question because, and I love Tony Robbins so much. He says, 
if you know it, but you don't do it, you don't know it. So we can say all day, we know about nutrition and listen, I'm still on the journey. So I still want to lose more. Okay. And, and so I, by no means, I, do I think I'm this expert person that just knows everything. What I do know is it takes action. Everything does to get any kind of result. So it, it's, and it, it boils down to the, the mindset that we have about it and what we decide that we want to do. So that's what I say. When we have all this information, if, if I hear something that's like, you know what, I think that workout program is really going to work for me. And then I don't do anything about it. I'm exactly where I was before I knew about the program. Right. So I don't know about it. It, it, it is action. Yeah. Everybody knows everything until they do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you know it. That's yeah. when you know it. Yeah, that is true. That is absolutely true. And, and I, I do, sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Uh, it, it can be a little defeating when we see so many things and we hear keto and um, the, keto is a new buzzword. And, and really what it is, is it's just a rebranded kind of Atkins, you know, low carb, and it's a little different. And um, I say balance is everything because we're not meant to, we're not meant to be in prison. We're doing this because we love our bodies, not because we hate ourselves or, you know, so like if, if somebody, and I just had this conversation earlier this week with somebody, she asked me how I would coach somebody that's saying, you know what, I'm going to celebrate after I lose my weight with this meal. She said, how would you coach it? And I'm like, I think she can get the meal before she reaches that goal. Seems like a really big goal. It's going to take a while. Right. And she's like, I'm glad to hear you say that. But, uh, we sometimes make up our minds that it's, it, it needs to be this big overhaul. That's not realistic. We're not going to get to the goal like that. My, my main, one of my big Lizisms is consistency over intensity. What can you commit to consistently? That's going to set you up to win over the long haul versus cutting all these things out. You're miserable not sustainable it we're really if we're looking to transform health and take control of health it must be sustainable and must be realistic yeah i like the consistency i just was actually a guest on a podcast this morning and i was talking about what drives me crazy about the before and after pictures is the fact that they're like a fixed point in time and then people think oh i'm at after so now i can just let it all go and do whatever i want Maintenance is the hardest part. There are some days, Laura, that my goal in that day or week is to simply not gain back the hundred pounds. Right. That, that some weeks are don't gain back that initial weight. It is a journey, especially if it's a large amount of weight, right? So it's, it's, there's grace. I say that so much. There must be grace, patience, and gentleness on the journey because it happens. You know, women around our special lovely time will retain water. It cannot throw you off when you gain water weight to where you just sabotage. What, what's it? there? There's a, a quote about, you know, if you, you have a setback, it's like having one flat tire and then you cut the rest of them. Right. Don't cut the rest of them because you got one flat tire. You have one flat tire work with it. It's okay. And, and you said something earlier that I, that I really liked is, is not allowing emotions to control us. I just heard this, um, Drake had said this actually, that his mother taught him the 72 rule, 72 hour rule where he, it, when he receives something that he doesn't like, maybe a critic, he allows 72 hours for mm -hmm. any reaction. And, and what happens is that the emotion starts to go less and less. And, and his mom said, somebody else will do something worse and it'll be in the paper, right? But we can practice this in our lives. We don't need to be a celebrity to, to practice this 72 right. hours. I have water weight. I have more on the scale than I wanted to see. Three days later, guess what? Not a big deal. I recommitted right when I saw that. Keep it moving. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, for listeners who are thinking, okay, I want to do something. But like you said, there's so many options. There's intermittent fasting, there's low carb. There's, is there something that you can offer them? Just do this and it will help, you know, just drink the water or do, is there just like one trick that they can kind of take while they might be figuring out if they're ready 
or deciding if they're ready. Yeah, because you touched on it. There's five levels to motivation, to what yeah. gets you to making an actual first step. What I would invite listeners to do is, I'm, I'm thinking about, because I mean, my goodness, one thing. I know. Always water. My goodness. I wish I had, I, one day, Laura, quote me on this podcast, I'm going to have a water sponsor. Water is so critical to the human body. We're made up in an adult body, uh, upwards of 60% as a child. It's, it's more, our organs need it. Our bones need it. Even our muscles need it. Our brain needs it. So one thing, and we get to flush out everything that we put in our body. Yeah. You know what? Water. If I had to say one, one thing you can start to integrate every single day to make a change towards healthier living, a gallon of water a day is easy. Um, I then would say, look at sugars. I would look at inflammatory foods like dairy. I can't tell you how much better I felt when I cut out dairy. They're inflammatory. Your organs get inflamed. You don't feel good. We feel lethargic. I would look at inflammatory foods and, and little changes. Little changes go a really long way. Stop eating fried food for a month. I gave one of my clients that challenge. Stop eating fried foods for a month. See how you feel. If you feel better, then keep rolling with it, right? And, right. and, and we always feel better, by the way. That's the thing. So I, I guess those are my, I guess that's not one. Uh, water, <laughs> water, 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 because the brain will function more and, and, and we're more clear. Uh, we, you can cut out alcohol. If you're drinking and you want to lose weight, man, you'll be amazed because the people don't understand the science behind drinking. What happens is the liver is made to burn body fat. This is such a critical point that I, I really want to go in on this if you don't okay. mind. So the liver is made to burn body fat. What happens when we drink alcohol, the liver stops burning the fat because it needs to flush out the toxins from the alcohol. It works to get it out of the body. So it's a two edge, two edge sword. Is that the phrase yep. where, where you're not burning the body fat and you're taking in the calories from the alcohol and you're dehydrated because the liver is now flushing it out. So if looking to lose weight, that, that really is a, a, a great route to go of saying, Hey, you know, I'm going to stop drinking for a few months. See how you feel, see what happens with the weight loss guaranteed, especially if you're drinking on a regular basis, you cutting out those sugars, um, and allowing the liver to do what it's made to do, which is burn fat. Yeah. You'll be ahead of the game. That's huge. That's really huge. And I'd like to close by having you share those five levels of motivation. Okay. So pre-contemplation, this is avoidance and that's not seeing a problem behavior or considering change. So th this could also be known as denial almost like somebody keeps telling me I should lose weight. No, I'm fine. I'm great. I'm healthy. And right. I've been <laughs> understand we've all been new here. And for me, it's specifically with weight loss. Contemplation is acknowledging that there is a problem, but struggling with ambivalence, weighing the pros and cons. So, so then you're looking at, okay, I could do this. And what will it mean for me? Still not taking action, right? So what, what happens if, if I lose weight, what will that mean? What will I need to do? How will people perceive me? How will my night weekend nights change? Preparation slash determination, taking steps and getting ready to change. Here's when you start to go check the membership costs at the gym, or you log on to the vtrainer.com. Hey, what's she about? Right? So that's preparation. You're starting to, to get the information needed to make an action step and you're still not committing the action, making the change and living the new behaviors. So you, you've kind of prepared for this. So you've denied it or, or you're just not even going to think about it. You're thinking about it and seeing where you feel comfortable about doing it. Then you're taking action to seek out what that looks like. Then, then you're making the change and then maintenance is you're maintaining the behavior change that is now part of your life. So now it's okay. I've taken that initial action. I've joined the gym and now I keep going to the gym. And so that creates more motivation, right? So when people say motivation, it's not this, I'm waking up and I'm motivated. No, I'm committed. <laughs> right? yeah. I assure you every single morning, I don't want, I've never met a morning that I've 
wanted to get out of bed and do 50 push-ups, 100 dead bug core exercises and 50 lunges. I haven't met a morning since ever, ever that I've, I've been wanting to do that, but I do it. So that's the maintenance piece of it, right? I already know I have a gym routine, but I started to do this because I set the action forward. I saw the results from it and now I'm maintaining it because it's working. I'm motivated to do it. Right? Yeah. So those are the five. Um, <laughs> that's so good because it caught me off guard. <laughs> I was like, oh shoot, I got to dig back. <laughs> good. And you're right. It is that maintenance. And once the maintenance phase hits, I think it's less difficult to maintain because it's my guess listeners out there aren't saying it's so hard to brush my teeth every morning or <laughs> it's so hard to make coffee it's just part of your habit you know you 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 change you take a shower you brush your teeth sometimes it's less of a pain sometimes it's more of a pain but you just do it and it's not that big of a deal you have to have a maintenance plan right? You have to have a plan in place of like, okay, but you're right. I mean, so many things then become just automatic. That's what I do. Right. It's what I do. And, and as long as the beliefs line up with that, then, then you're good to go. There's such a big piece to belief systems, but again, I, yeah. another one. <laughs> I want to come back, Laura. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, where can the listeners find you and learn more about your programs and mindset and all of that good stuff? Yeah, please visit us, www.thevtrainer.com. So the V is in virtual, trainer.com. Uh, we have been virtual from the very beginning. So I, I really understood this. It's what I needed. I wanted a plan that was customized and convenient uh, that I could do anywhere in the world. You can also call me 305-912-4767 if that's easier. Um, happy to serve, happy to answer any questions. If you just want to talk to somebody, yeah. give us a shout. We, we've been there. I, I can't say that enough, how much compassion I have, because I, I, I know what it's like. Um, I know what it's like. Yeah. I love that. And even, if, even if you're kind of in the denial stage and you're just kind of working into some more information, get that information because yeah. You are where you are and there's nothing right or wrong about it, but getting more information is always a good thing. So thank you so much. And listeners, thanks for hanging with us today. Um, there's just like so much to say around this, but it is, it is all awareness. It's all micro habits. It's all tuning into how you feel and just, just noticing. Because for me, the bottom line is I want to feel good and I don't know how it's going to make me feel good, but let's try and let's sample this. And if this works better, we'll do that. And if this works better, we'll do that. So I encourage you wherever you're at, just to feel good. And believe you can feel good, no matter how bad you feel today, no matter how, how bad your body feels, it is possible to feel better and it's possible to even feel good. Yeah. Yes. And it doesn't matter what excuse you have or what condition you have. It can be better. So why not make it better? And it is kind of fun. <laughs> so if you have not already done so, go ahead and check out Liz's site and also jump on burlesqueandbubbly.com and join me every Friday from four to five mountain time for a lightly choreographed dance class for women of all ages, all shapes and all abilities. We'll dance for about 45 minutes and then we're going to have about 15 minutes of deep conversation about what it means to move, to be sexy to be a woman, to not feel sexy. <laughs> so join me four to five Mountain Standard Time every Friday, www.burlesqueandbubbly.com. Have an amazing week. And as usual, always remember to flaunt exactly who you are because who you are is always more than enough. Tune in next time to Flaunt. Build your dreams, live your sparkle with radio host Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 radio network. Overcome the need to please and find the uninhibited joy of being exactly who you are right now. Come find your fetish, laugh out loud, accept unconditionally, navigate the negative, and trust in your truth. 
Find out more and get your free gift at lauratiedel.com. That's L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E.com. 